grade 11s, we are on uh, RBEs day three, and we're factoring the harder trinomials. It's going to be fun. All right, so we looked at number one. Always look for a greatest common factor first. Secondly, see if it's a simple trinomial, which is where we have a trinomial that looks like x squared plus bx plus c. There are a couple of special ones. We had difference of squares. And we had perfect squares. Spelling is not a deal. Today, we're looking at trinomials where you don't have a 1 at the front. This one has a 2, this one has a 3, and so on. So our process is a little bit more involved, but the goal is the same. We want to take that trinomial, to factor it, we're going to write it as a multiplication. So I know that I want my answer to look like that. But because I have a 2x squared at the beginning, it's a little bit more complicated. The only way I can end up with 2x squared at the beginning is to split it to 2x and x. But I have to be careful. It seems like I need the numbers 1 and 3 in here, but maybe I got it wrong, and it should have been 3 and 1. And that will make a great difference as to what I will get for my outside inside, depending on where I put the 1 and the 3. So we have a process that allows us to get the numbers in the right order, all like we want, called decomposition. And in decomposition, I am going to take my original function, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3, and I'm going to decompose that 7 into two parts. So I'm going to decompose that 7 into two parts such that the two parts add to 7. That's my outside inside again. Multiply to, this time it's not just the 3, it's 6. And that is from the lasts. So I want two numbers that add to 7 and multiply to 6. My two numbers are 6 and 1. But those numbers aren't numbers that I put into the brackets. Those are numbers that I replace the 7x with. So 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 can be rewritten as 2x squared, this is where my numbers come in, plus 6x plus 1, x plus 3. So I have not changed the question. I have just decomposed the 7x into two parts that will help me to determine the right numbers in my brackets. So let's do our thought bubble here. We have decomposition. It's to decompose. I should sneak that word in there. Decompose the middle term into two parts that add to the b from here, multiply to the outside and, sorry, the first and the last, so ac. When I have written that in decomposed form, then I can factor it by grouping. That's where I factor those two, take a break, factor those two, and then I'll put them together in a moment going to factor 2x squared plus 6x. Greatest common factor for 2x squared and 6x is a 2 and an x. 2x times what gives me 2x squared? I need another x. 2x times what gives me 6x? I need 3. There. I have factored the first two. Take a break. Let's look at the second two. I want a greatest common factor for 1x and for 3. 
Well, there isn't a greatest common factor other than the number 1. So I'll write my 1, and I'll write an x, and a 3, and I have found the greatest common factor, such as it is, for the first two terms and for the set. Oh my goodness, look at that. The two brackets are identical. So for those two big messy piles, my greatest common factor is the x plus 3. And the other bracket is the leftovers. Because I have multiplied x plus 3 by 2x for the first pile, and I have multiplied the x plus 3 times 1 for the second pile. I have factored 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 into two binomials that look like a foil, and I have done it by decomposition. Let's do the second one. 3t squared minus 11t minus 20. So in my thought bubble, it says we're going to decompose the middle term into two parts that add to b and multiply to ac. So the first thing I want to do is come up with my two numbers. If I want to add to b, that's the middle guy. I want to add to minus 11. I want to multiply to, that's ac, that's these two together, minus 60. Now this part can take you a little bit of thought process. My thought process is start with multiplication. What can multiply to 60? I'm just going to write a little list here. Well, 6 and 10 is the obvious. Um, 1 and 60 is kind of trivial. 2 and 30. 3 and 20. Uh, 4 and 15. 5 and 12. Uh, 6 and 10, we already have that one. I think I have them all, but I'm going to look. If they're going to multiply to a negative, one of them's going to be positive, one of them's going to be negative. And they're going to add to negative 11. So the larger one is going to be negative. And the two numbers need to be 11 apart. Those are my two numbers. And the larger one is going to be the negative. So I am going to decompose this into 3t squared minus 15t plus 4t, and I still have a minus 20. It doesn't or matter how you order the two middle terms, minus 15t and 4t. I could have done the 4t first. I just need to be careful that the 15 is the one that's negative, and the 4 is the one that's positive. Now that I have decomposed that, I can factor it by grouping. So step two is to factor the first two, pause, factor the second two. So for 3t squared and minus 15t, my greatest common factor would be a 3 and a t. In my brackets, I need to write down what I multiply 3t by to get the first two terms. I need another t, subtract, I need a 5. Done. For the second two terms, I have a greatest common factor of 4. But I don't have a t in both, so that is as good as it gets. 4 times what gives me 4t. Subtract, 4 times what gives me 20, a 5. Well, what do you know? The two brackets are identical. So final answer. The bracket that's identical and the leftovers. And I am done. The third one, 2u squared plus 7u plus 6. The numbers are a little smaller, a little nicer. We are going to decompose this by decomposing the 7u into two parts that add to 7, multiply, don't forget, it's both of those together, or 12. My two numbers are 3 and 4. So I'm going to write my function decomposed. I'm choosing the 3 first, but it doesn't matter. So you can see that we haven't changed it. It's still the same function. It just has the middle 7u divided into two bits. Then I greatest common factor the first two. Wait. Greatest common factor the second two first two. The greatest common factor, there's not a number common to both other than one. But there is a u common to both. So I would have a u. 
I need a 2 and another u plus I need a 3. I have factored the first two. Plus, for 4u and 6, there's not a u common to both, but there is a number 2. In the bracket, I have 2u plus 3. If your two brackets aren't identical, you've done something wrong. Final answer is the identical bracket and the leftovers. If you do a FOIL on 2u plus 3 times u plus 2, you will get 2u squared plus 7u plus 6. This would be a really good place to stop and do some from pages 83 and from course notes 5 to 7, Snidely, Boarding House, and The Old Lawyer. The total of our factoring in grade 11 is greatest common factor first. Do your common factoring first and then consider the other options. All the rest of our factoring involves trinomials. We have four possibilities. The first one is simple trinomials where the first number in front of x squared is a 1. They can simply be factored by throwing up your brackets and undoing FOIL. Trinomials that are more difficult is where you have a number in front of the x squared that is not a 1. We need to be able to do both. With the trinomials that are more difficult, we do decomposition. It can be very helpful to keep an eye out for the special cases, particularly the difference of squares. Difference of squares look like something squared subtract something else squared. And they can easily be factored as the square root of the first, add the square root of the second, and the square root of the first, subtract the square root of the second. Perfect squares are less easy to memorize, but it is something you could certainly consider. If you have something squared, and you end with something squared, and in the middle you have twice the square root of the first, the square root of the second. That can be factored very nicely as x plus square root of the last, x plus square root of the last. Keeping that in mind, we're going to do some factoring where we have everything thrown at us. First one, 3x squared plus 6x minus 15. My thought process is, is there a greatest common factor? Always do that first. Yes, there is. A 3 divides into all of the terms, but there is not an x in all three terms, so only 3. Write in brackets what I would multiply 3 by to get what I started with. x squared plus I need a 2 and a 5. Next, I would consider if there's anything further I can do to factor this, and there very likely is. It looks like x squared plus 2x minus 5 is a simple trinomial which means I can put up two sets of brackets and undo FOIL to factor it. For firsts, I need an x and an x in the brackets to get an x squared. For my lasts, I need two numbers that multiply to minus 5, and those same two numbers should add to 2. Are there any two numbers that multiply to minus 5 and add to 2? The only two numbers that multiply to minus 5 are 1 and 5, and 1 is negative and 1 is positive. Those never add to 2. So I am not able to factor further. So I was done at line 1. But my thought process is, is I should always try. All right, the second one. x squared minus 8x minus 12. I need to decide whether there is a greatest common factor for all three terms, and there is not. So I need to look second. Is there a 1 here or another number? It's an invisible 1, so it's a simple trinomial. Two sets of brackets. I am trying to undo FOIL. For a simple trinomial, I need an x and an x at the beginning for the firsts. For my lasts, for my numbers, I need to multiply to 12 lasts, add to minus 8, that's the outside inside. All right, 
to multiply to 12. I could use 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. And the only one of those pairs that adds to 8 in any sort of a way is 2 and 6. If I want to multiply to a positive, I have two choices. Choice 1 is positive, positive. Choice 2 is negative, negative. Which of those two choices would add to negative 8 would be choice 2. So I am going to use negative 2 and negative 6 in my factoring. Let's do a quick FOIL in our heads. x times x is x squared. Outside is negative 6x. Inside is negative 2x. And last is positive 12. x squared minus 8x plus 12. When I simplify this, I did it. All right, the third one. 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. It looks like this one does not have a greatest common factor. It is not a simple trinomial. It could be one of the special cases, but it's most definitely a more difficult trinomial. I'm going to look for a moment to see if it is a perfect square. This is 3x squared, and this is 2 squared. If it is true that the middle term is 2 times 3x times 2, I have a perfect square. Let's check. 2 times 3x is 6x. 6x times 2 is 12x. It is a perfect square. A perfect square is where both brackets are identical. Bracket, bracket, they're both going to be the same. I need a 3x at the beginning, a 3x at the beginning, a 2 at the back half, and a 2. And I need to think for a moment. My sign needs to be the same in both. And it needs to allow me to add, when outside inside, to a negative 12x. They must both be negatives. D. 25a squared plus 30ab plus 9b squared. Looks like it also might be a perfect square, but there's not a greatest common factor for all three terms. It is not a simple trinomial, and it is not a difference of squares. So let's see if it's a perfect square as well. Otherwise, it's a difficult trinomial, and we'll have to decompose it. The first term is 5a squared, and the last term is 3b squared. If it is true that the middle term is 2 times the 5a times the 3b, we have a perfect square. 2 times 5a is 10a. 10a times 3b is 30ab. Yes, it is also a perfect square. That means my both brackets will be identical. Where the beginning of the bracket is 5a, and the back half of the bracket is 3b. And to keep them identical, I need to decide whether it's positive, positive, or negative, negative. Since everything is positive, it must be positive, positive. A perfect square. E. x to the fourth minus 9y squared. I would look for a greatest common factor. and There isn't one other than one. The giveaway with this one is that there's only two terms and there's a negative sign. So it appears to be a difference of squares. Difference of squares are awesome if you've got a good memory. The brackets have the same terms front and back, but one is positive, one is negative. I need the square root of the first term for firsts in both brackets. So x squared times x squared would give me x to the fourth. At the back half of my brackets, I need the square root of 9y squared, so that would be a 3y and a 3y. If I do FOIL on x squared plus 3y times x squared minus 3y, I'll get x to the fourth plus invisible 0 x to the x2y minus 9y squared. It works. Second last, 
8x squared plus 14x minus 15, my thought process is, is it a greatest common factor? Is there a greatest common factor? There is not. There is not an x in all three terms, nor a number that is common to all three other than one. Is it a simple trinomial with a one at the beginning? No. And because none of the terms are perfect squares, this will not be a perfect square trinomial. It is a difficult trinomial I need to decompose. For decomposition, I need to break the 14x into two parts. These two parts need to add to 14. And they need to multiply to, don't forget, outside and last, minus 120. This process can be a little bit difficult finding the numbers that you want for the decomposition. So I'm going to show you what my brain does. Hope it doesn't scare you too much. I think about multiplication. What multiplies to get 120 would also add to 14. Looks a little intimidating. So I take my 120 and I write it with lowest possible factors. So I know that that will be 2 times 60. And I know that 60 is 2 times 30. 30 is 2 times 15. Whoops. And 15 is 3 times 5. I can't make those numbers any smaller. They are not divisible by anything other than 1 in themselves. So, come on. All right, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 is 120. Somewhere buried is a pair that multiplies to 120 and adds to 14. So I'm just going to grab a couple here and see what we have. We have 8 times 15. I don't know why it's doing that. 8 times 15. Are 8 and 15 ever able to add to 14? No. So that's not the pair that I want. What if I did the first two? The first two times the rest. 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 is 30. 4 and 30 ever able to add to 14, and so on till I get the right pair. As I kept playing with my factors of 120, I came up with the magic pair. 6 and 20 multiply to 120 and add to 14. I need them to multiply to a negative, so, and add to a positive, so I need one of them positive, one of them negative, and the larger one will be positive. So negative 6 and positive 20 are the two numbers that I've been looking for to decompose. I'm going to decompose the 14x into the parts minus 6 and 20. So I can rewrite 8x squared as 8x squared minus 6x plus 20x minus 15. That was the hard part with big numbers is to come up with the right two numbers to decompose the middle term. But now that I've got it, I factor the first two and then factor the last two. 8x squared minus 6x has a greatest common factor of 2 and x. In my brackets, I would find 2x times 4x gives me 8x squared minus 3 times 2x gives me the 6x. Pause. Let's factor the second two. For 20x and minus 15, my greatest common factor will be 5. In brackets, coincidentally, and we know what we're looking for, it is, again, 4x minus 3. Final answer. The common bracket and the leftovers. 
I have fully factored 8x squared plus 14x minus 15 by decomposing. The last one, 14x squared plus 40x minus 6. I look for a greatest common factor first. There is one. There, now I can see it a little better. There is at least a 2 that divides into all of those. Yep, just 2. So my greatest common factor is 2. And I will give you a mark for that. 2 times what? Gives me what I started with. 7x squared plus 20x minus 3. I need to consider then if I can go any further. The middle, or sorry, the bracket is 7x squared plus 20x minus 3 is not a simple trinomial, a difference of squares, or a perfect square. It's one of the ugly guys. So I need to decompose 7x squared plus 20x minus 3 in order to factor it. I need to find two numbers that add to 20 and multiply to minus 21. Multiplying to 21, I could use 3 and 7. Well, that's never going to add to 20, so that's not it. I could do 21 and 1. I think that's the only other choice. And that can add to 20 because I am multiplying to get a negative. 1 is positive and 1 is negative. So 21 and negative 1 does add to positive 20. So I'm going to decompose my bracket, and I'm going to leave it in brackets because it's going to get a little hairy here. Plus 21x minus 1x. Here I've decomposed the 20x. Subtract 3, bracket. I am going to factor that pair and then that pair. I know my goal is to get the same thing in both brackets. So I know what my, my I'm aiming for. Equals 2 times the first 2. My greatest common factor for 7x squared and 21x is 7x. Bracket, bracket. 7x times x and 7x times 3 is that factored. The second two are both negative. But I know in the back of my brain that I want my bracket to be the same. I want it to be x plus 3. And I can get that if I take out a common factor of minus 1. So it's like I'm cheating a little bit. Final answer. I still have the 2. And then I have two sets of brackets. One with the common bracket, which is x plus 3. And the other with the leftovers. Final answer, 2 times x plus 3 times 7x minus 1. Is the original question fully factored? Page 83, number 5, and your course notes about toothpaste, police, balloons, and Paris are all a mix of factoring. And you need to be able to be proficient at all types of factoring. Practice makes perfect.